Hello, everybody. Welcome to another political episode. Today, we're going to be talking about the Republican Revolution, which occurred during 1994. Unfortunately, there is no Democratic Revolution. Um, I don't know if there will be someday. But as of 1994, there is one Republican Revolution. That is the Revolution of 1994. Um, we'll see how 2022 goes. A lot of Republicans are getting excited right now, saying that um, the red wave has returned. We see in Minnesota, um, Keith Ellison is dropping in the polls while uh, Jim Schultz is rising. And Jensen is surging while Tim Waltz is in the lead, but his momentum and um, momentum is going down. Um, so... It's very uh, controversial. Democrats are saying the victories in Alaska are, are going to be a blue wave. Well, Demo Republicans are saying, look, we have Washington and Oregon. A lot of the GOP is doing good there. Two Democrat strong states that you would be expected to carry. You can't even win those. Um, therefore, it's going to be a red wave. So it really it depends. And this is how sort of uh, 1994 kind of worked out. So uh, I'm going to read a little Wikipedia. I hope you don't mind. Uh, just to give you a brief introduction here. Uh, so the 1994 United States elections were held on November 8th, 1994. The elections occurred in the middle of the Democratic President Bill Clinton's first term in office and elected the members of 104th United States Congress. The elections have been described as the Republican Revolution because the Republican Party captured unified control of Congress for the first time since 1952, Republicans picked up eight seats in the Senate and won a net of 54 seats in the House of Representatives. Republicans also picked up a net of 10 governorships and took control of many state legislative chambers. Republicans were able to nationalize the election by campaigning on a contract with America, and the new Republican majorities passed conservative legislation such as the Telecommunications Act of 1996, the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Act, and the Defense of Marriage Act. The election was a major defeat for Clinton's health care plan, but Clinton's subsequent move to the center may have helped him win re-election in 1996. George Washington's election as, uh, not, not George Washington, excuse me, George W. Bush's election uh, as governor of Texas laid the groundwork for a successful campaign for president in 2000. The Republicans heavily attacked Clinton for rena renaging on his new Democrat philosophy that he had run in 1992. Clinton had passed a tax increase and an assault weapon ban in his two years in office and had allowed homosexuals to be in the military, sparking act backlash. Clinton's pu push for universal health care was the straw that broke the camel's back as the GOP ran heavily against it in the midterms, and it is argued to be the re main reason why the Democrats faced heavy losses in 1994. As of 2022, this is the last time a party flipped control of both houses of Congress during a president's first term. So depending uh, if this Republicans flip both houses um, uh, in Congress dur during the president's first term, uh, who is a Democrat, uh, this could be a second Republican revolution. This could be, uh, we, this might not be the last time. So depending on the GOP on the polls we see here. So let's take a look at the results here. We're going to take a look at the Senate. Uh, starting off with Maine. Uh, Maine. Um, so Olympia Snow uh, won a pretty good victory in Maine. Over 60% beating hit her opponent, Tom Andrews. At a 36 percentage. Vermont, Republicans win big in Vermont also. 50% said going to Jim Jeffords, um, while some per percentages go to Jan Backus, the Democrat, with 40%, and Gavin T. Mills, with, 
an independent with 56 59 percent um massachusetts is the first win for the democrats in the senate um we hear is ted kennedy versus Mitt romney uh kennedy being the brother of the president uh john f kennedy he won pretty good victory 58 percent to say romney uh, future go uh, future governor of, of Massachusetts. Um, I don't know if he's already governor during this time, but he claimed a 41 percentage. I do not like this map. Uh, I wish there this was a county map because this tells me nothing because I am not from Massachusetts and I do not know the cities of Massachusetts other than Boston. So um, that's that. Rhode Island, surprisingly, a state that's been an active Democrat state for years. Uh, what Republicans won a landslide in Rhode Island. John Caffey um, won with 64% and won re-election against his opponent, Linda Kushner, uh, with a 35 percentage. Now, in the state of Connecticut, it's a 67% for Joe Lieberman. And, whoa, we know who Lieberman is. Lieberman is that, uh, he's, he ran in a couple elections recently. Um, he def, I, I recognize him. I think he was in the 2016 or 2020. Um, he's a 20, he's an independent. Um, yeah, definitely a third party. He used to be a Democrat senator uh, from Connecticut. And he won with a total of 67% against his opponent, Jerry Libera, with 31%. Uh, New York is being called for Democrats. Um, so, yeah, Democrats are making good, good gains. So we see 55 percentage for Pat Monadon, whatever, 55%. Against and he beated his opponent, Bernet Bernet Bernadette Castro, hmm, with forty one percent. Rick Santorum, uh, we I've heard a lot about him. I let's see here. He is Santorum is. I believe he's. I've heard. I've heard a lot about him even today, uh, in, when it comes to election. He is the. Uh, he was a senator of Pennsylvania. I don't. I think he's out of office. Um, yes, he's definitely a Republican. Uh, he won, forty nine percent. Democrats did pretty good in Pennsylvania here. Uh, pretty good run. Um. Let's see here, New Jersey. Old oh, Jersey. Uh, New Jersey, Democrats won in New Jersey with Frank Lutenberg. He won with 50% of the popular vote. Republicans also did pretty good. Chuck Haitian also finished second, 47% of the popular vote. Won by Lutenberg, won by like three points. That said, um, that's in the state of New Jersey. Now, Joe Biden is still in the Senate during this time. Uh, Repu Delaware split. One's Democrat, Joe Biden. The other is a Republican, Bill Roth. Uh, Delaware is, so, is a swing state during the 90s, although it has voted dramatically for Bill Clinton. Uh, it has been pretty active with Republicans when it comes to the House and the Senate. Bill Roth carried the state of Connecticut, 55%. Uh, I believe he wins. Uh, nope, he just, I think it was his senator before him, William Victor Roth Jr. So uh, there must be related. I am not a Roth uh, follower, so I, am, I know nothing. And yes, Roth beat it at Charles Auberly. Auberly with 42% of the popular vote. That is said it or in Delaware, good victory, decently there. Um, 94, well, I should say Maryland. I like this map. This map is one of my favorites. Um, Sabernes, 
Paul Sabernas, let's see if he was a senator. Uh, yes, he is re-elected senator, 59% of the popular vote, defeating his opponent, Bill Brock, with a um, Brock saving around 40% of the said popular vote. West Virginia. And when it comes to West Virginia, Democrats, West Virginia during this time is a huge Democrat blue state. Uh, Robert Byrd, I believe he was the son of the famous, well, I, I, I he reminds me of Harry Byrd or something like that, who participated in the 1960 presidential election from Virginia, senator from Virginia. He carried Mississippi and Alabama, That's which these states almost went to Kennedy. However, Mississippi and Alabama being states that were pro-segregation, anti-liberal policies, they voted for Burt, a Democrat who supported the uh, segregation policy. So Robert Byrd carried the state 69%. Uh, his opponent, Stanley Kloss, didn't stand a chance. She came, uh, He came around with 31%. So yes, I believe that was Byrd. Byrd was in the Senate for a very long time. I don't know if he's the longest senator, but Chuck Robb wins uh, his wins re wins re-election in Virginia. Uh, Virginia, is, this is a good win for the Democrats because Virginia is a red state during this time, pretty conservative. Has been, refused resisted voting for Clinton uh, and Jimmy Carter, despite being in the South, resisted voting for su Southern candidates sticking with the GOP. So uh, I will acknowledge Oliver North, the Republican, did pretty well, 42%. And uh, Marshall Coleman. Uh, if only uh, more supporters of Coleman, more so Coleman supporters would have went to North, then um, North would have been, would take down Chuck Robb. Ultimately, this was a close election. I will say the GOP did pretty good in Virginia, although it did not win it. Now, we have our old friend Connie Mack III. He won a good landslide, 70% of the victory margin. Uh, he be beating his opponent, Hugh Rodham, with, with, um, who only had 29% of the popular vote. That was a pretty big win, and it was um, Connie Mack III. He, he won easily won re-election in said Florida. Now, Tennessee has two elections. One of them is a special election. The first election here is the um, 1994 first election. So Bill, Fur Bill Frist, he um, won the senatorship, uh, claiming a 56% of the popular vote. His opponent, Jim Sasser, wins a 42%. Jim Sasser was the senator of Tennessee. He ultimately was defeated by Frist. He was knocked out of the Senate by his opponent. Republicans did pretty well, 56% um, when it comes to Tennessee. The special election in Tennessee. Uh, this we see is Fred Thompson. Uh, he is a new senator now. New senator. Uh, Harlan Matthews didn't run. Uh, so Fred Thompson here uh, won, wins the uh, election in Tennessee, 60% of the popular vote, beating Jim Cooper with a 36%. In Ohio, Republican De Mike DeWine, DeWine wins a 53% uh, in Ohio um, against his opponent, Joel Hyatt, um, and the independent candidate, Slavet, Slaven, Slovenic, Joe Slovenic. Um, yeah, so Republicans did pretty well, crushed it in the state of uh, Ohio. Uh, Indiana was a big win for the Republicans, with Richard Lugar winning at sixty-seven percent for the Senate. He wins his re he wins re-election as the senator from Indiana. Of course, beating his set opponent Jim Johns. Michigan, uh, looking at Michigan here, uh, Spencer Abraham, uh, he is a new senator. Um, he new to the Senate. Uh, ultimately, um, 
Don Regal did not run, so Spencer Abraham took that position. Uh, won by 51%. Uh, so yeah. Don Regal served four terms as Michigan Senator. Um, yeah, Spencer Abram, uh, took this. Uh, now looking at Wisconsin, uh, Democrats win in Wisconsin by a pretty good margin. Herb Call won by a percentage of 58% against his opponent, Robert Welch. Uh, yeah, so 58%, that's a landslide, um, so much for the red wave in Wisconsin. Um, once again, Robert Welch got a percentage of 40%. In Mississippi, Republicans uh, said here, uh, dominated here in Mississippi, uh, Trent Watt. Um, let's see here. Uh, he won, wins his re-election uh, as the senator from Mississippi, once again, has a total, won by a total of 68%. Uh, Ken Harper, uh, the Democratic, Democratic Car Ken Harper finished with 31%. Um, so, Missouri, you're next. Missouri, Republicans dominated in Missouri. Uh, John Ashcroft, he manages um, to win the senator election by a pretty good margin. Why? Uh, he actually wasn't even the senator when he was elected. Uh, so, which uh, kind of scratches my head a little bit. Because Missouri is a big swing state during the 90s. Uh, but in the 90s, it treaded more democratic. Uh, so... To see Missouri kind of vote this high for Republicans is kind of weird. Uh, and the only place that uh, his opponent, Alan Wheat, did good in, it was St. Louis. Um, I believe it's St. Louis County. I don't know. It's an independent city. I don't know my Missouri counties. Uh, but, yes, John uh, Ashcroft was the former governor of Missouri, though that was probably the reason why he was probably a popular big hit and a big star. Um, well, Alan we we is just a U.S. representative, so I'll take out Maryland, although I really like its map. Um, Minnesota. Now, let's see. Republicans here did pretty good. Uh, so we have our very own Rod Grams. He was a senator from uh, Minnesota. Uh, very newly elected. Um, let's see what polls say. because I'm, So this state, yes, very liberal as we know, Minnesota. Uh, so you'll see here, looking out, Rod Grams won uh, thanks to Dean Barkley, who seized uh, 5% of the popular vote in Minnesota, preventing Ann Wyna, the Democratic farmer labor candidate, from seizing the votes. Now, let's just say Dean Barkley didn't run. Maybe, yes, I could definitely see Wyna win. However, Rod, thanks to Barkley uh, running that campaign, Republicans won the Senate, and, and Rod Grams was elected the senator. New senator. And yeah, David Dorenberger said, nope, I'm not going to run. Okay, now it's going to get all weird. Deep red state suddenly going super democratic. Uh, Kent Conrad. Now, it's not, it's completely normal. To have, let's just say, a state has a really good Democrat governor, and he's super popular. And this soup, this very big popular Democrat senator is from, it, it's he's from the red state of North Dakota. This is the case with Kent Conrad. Um, he has been the senator before, proved himself very popular. And reasons here, senators tend to get re-elected pretty easily. Reasons? Because they're in the year the Senate for six years. They do a lot of a lot of stuff. A lot of them are good. Uh, some people they don't vote. But the reasons why North Dakota, a big, big solid red state, 
voted for Kent Conrad, uh, probably because of the his laws, and people just liked him. It didn't matter what political party came from. He comes from the N- uh, MPL, which um, North Dakota and Minnesota are the only uh, states that don't have an, a Democratic Party in their state elections. We have North Dakota has the NPL, which is the North Dakota Democratic Person League Party, uh, and Minnesota has the DFL, uh, the Democratic Farmer Labor Party. Uh, So, yes, big win. Kent Kent Conrad seizing 58% of the popular vote against his opponent, Ben Clay Burr, winning, uh, who only seized 42% of the popular vote. Uh, Nebraska, uh, Bob Curie, the Democrat from Nebraska, wins the Senate election. He wins re-election against his opponent, Jan Stani, 54% to 45%. A very good margin. So far, this is a red wave. I mean, if, if this was happening, to, I would disagree. Well, really depends. Why, well, if it's a red wave, why is Republicans winning in red states like North Dakota? Why is Democrats winning in states like North Dakota and Nebraska, where Republicans are all over all over the place? Well, once again, it's not about their political party; it's about what they're doing um, that they care for. Oklahoma, uh, Jim Inhofe wins fifty. Wins by 15 uh, against his opponent, Dave McCourty, uh, with against his 40%. So, and Inhofe is the new senator from Oklahoma. New Mexico, Jeff Bingaman, Bingaman uh, is now the is had won re-election pretty easily, obtaining 54% of the popular vote. Um, once again, beating his opponent, Colin McMillan, with 46% in New Mexico. Wyoming, uh, 58% uh, have voted for Craig L. Thomas. He sees the 58% of the popular vote beating his opponent, Mike Sullivan, who only ob- obtained 30, 39% of the vote, which in sees the county that ha- carries uh, Cheyenne, uh, although this area tends to vote very Republican also. Uh, 58% Thomas uh, is the new senator of Wyoming. Um, Conrad Burns, another Conrad. Uh, Burns wins by 62% of the popular vote, uh, and, and he was senator before, so he gets re-elected. Jack Mudd, who obtains 30, not 37% of the popular vote, loses his election, only getting the Helena area, um, a little area up here, but nothing much. Utah. Now, Utah... Uh, Republicans dominate in Utah with 68% of the popular vote, beating uh, with Orrin Hatch, beating his opponent, uh, Patrick, she- Patrick Shea, uh, winning, re- get re- re-elected, being re-elected as governor of U- Senator, excuse me, of Utah. So, congratulations, Hatch. 68%. Uh, John Kyle. Now, this looks like an average, typical Arizona ma- map. This is all the counties. This is how, this is where the counties of Arizona lean to. Um, so John Kyle, he wins with a fifty-three percent margin, while Sam Coppersmith obtained thirty-nine percent, and Scott Granger, the Libertarian, sees sixty-six percent. Yeah, otherwise I would think uh, Kyle would win anyway. It was a smooth race, uh, and Kyle did do a good job, it seems, uh, rallying up. He is the new um, senator. 
uh, Arizona had a Democrat senator, Dennis Webster, uh, Dennis Webster DeCon, DeConchi, um, yeah, and he's like, nope, I'm not going to run this time, I'm leaving the open race to a Republican, 53% of the popular vote. Now, Air, now California, I laugh at this one because Frank Feinstein barely won. Uh, first off, we got to realize Orange County that holds Anaheim is a deep, solid Republican county. Orange County will vote Republican and it has voted Republican. It even resisted Barack Obama. But when Donald Trump came, it's like, and yeah. Um, had some Trump derangement syndrome and said, let's go for someone else. Uh, and since uh, 2016, it's been voted Democratic. Although Orange County was a huge help for Republicans in, in California, today Kamala Harris couldn't even win the county and uh, hasn't carried the county at all, believe it or not, in her years of politics as an attorney general and a senator. Uh, this county has resisted her vote. Uh, so fairly conservative, moderate uh, when you look at that, but Dianne Feinstein uh, did win the election 46%. Uh, Michael Huffington got 44%. Could have very well won the election if you got more votes here. Well, I think this is, it's either Imperial County uh, and this area here got more votes from Democrat areas. Could very well much win against Feinstein. So yes, Feinstein wins, I believe, one re-election, or if I'm wrong, correct me. Now this map is interesting. Uh, Richard Byron, uh, he wins the election by 50%. He got a lot of counties. He got a lot of, he got Clark County, which carries um, Las Vegas, and the Carlson City area up here, and, and which leaves his opponent, Hal Furman, with only the more rural areas. And even this area up here didn't really, he did a little lousy job collecting both in that area. Um, he had a hard time with. So yeah, Hal Furman struggled a lot in this election. Uh, so yes, Richard, By Richard Bryan wins, uh, Re Senator Bryan wins, um, gets reelected the senator of uh, Nevada. While we get to Washington, Washington, Slade Gordon, 55% of the popular vote. Um, he'll, he, Republicans dominated all Washington, while his opponent, Ron Sims, only obtained like 44% of the popular vote and won three counties. Uh, once again, Slade Gordon, uh, Gordon is a senator. Already an incumbent senator, did some great things in Washington. People like him. So they're going to vote for him again. So Slate, Slate Gordon wins Washington 55%. And this leaves us our, to our last Senate seat. That is... Oh, there's the map. Hawaii. Now, I, this could be the highest margin, oh, or if I'm wrong, look back, but 71%. This is definitely the highest Democrat margin. 71%, Daniel Akaka, a native Hawaiian, it seems, um, wins against his opponent, Maria Hustis, uh, with a, who only obtained 24% of the popular vote. Now, Akaka, once again, is already a senator, and it seems he Democrats tend to carry every single county in Hawaii. It's just how the politics goes. Every single county will vote Democrat. Uh, so 71% have voted for Akaka. All right, now let's talk about the House. The House is pretty interesting here. You'll see some states. Now, I'm looking at the more, more large districts right here. More large. And what I mean is the large district is a large district is a, is a state with only one district. And that is its state itself. Uh, ultimately, Vermont is an example, but it's not participated in this election. I don't know if it has. I'm not going to review it, though. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Delaware is an example of an at-large district. Delaware uh, this year voted Republican in 1994, voted Republican um, and re-elected its House representative, of course, um, 
I am not going to waste time looking that up. I'm just going to show you guys. So yeah, Delaware, once again, pretty conservative in the 90s when it comes to its own state. Although in the 90s, the state has voted frequent and democratic uh, many times. So De Delaware, yes, goes to Republicans. Uh, and then we're going to go all the way up to the state of North Dakota. North Dakota goes pretty Democrat. Uh, surprisingly, just like in the Senate election. So far, it's all blue for North Dakota. Uh, the NPL uh, is definitely one good ground in North Dakota. And it even its neighbor in South Dakota, very big win in South Dakota. Democrats triumph in that state of South Dakota. In North Dakota, yeah, North Nebraska, I'll, we're, I'll, I'll do the states with districts... I'll save you guys for later, but we're focusing on large districts. They're my favorite, if you guys uh, cannot already tell. Wyoming. Um, yes, obviously went to the Republicans. Pretty uh, Republican state. Yes, Wyoming senators and representatives for, for, that comes from the Democratic Party, yes, did serve as uh, represented the Wyoming. Well, Democrats did what represent the Wyoming at large district. However, it's ultimately not common as we progress through the 2000s. Uh, in Montana, it's not a surprise. Montana, a very liber libertarian state, uh, all went to the Democrats. Uh, even today, Montana's government is split between Democrats and Republicans. They don't, they absolutely choose that. They like the stability. They don't like the division. So, like, for instance, Montana used to have a long time serving Democrat governor. Montana, it, ultimately, Democrats hold the governorship the most when it comes to Montana. And Montana has one Republican senator and one Democrat senator, senator speaking today. So, yes, Montana is very uh, lippy floppy, like, very. They will choose, they want to make each party to be have equal representation in the government, which is good. However, uh, in the House of Representatives today in 2020, it's more Republican, if not so deep Republican. Montana is no longer a one state, a one district state. It now has a second district. It has gotten a second district in 20, the 2020 census. Uh, now it has this, a little they have two districts, one here and one here. Um, so no, no longer the Mon Montana does no longer have one representative. Even so, uh, the two districts tend to lean more Republican. So that is the case. You'll see. Um, so Montana definitely uh, Democrat. I, I believe it. So Montana did go pretty Democrat. Um, more at-large districts. Nevada is not an at-large district because thanks to uh, Las Vegas, if Las Vegas didn't exist totally, it would be a totally at-large district. The two at-large -lar districts at the bottom is Alaska and Hawaii. They're obvious. Uh, Alaska, pretty Republican during this time in the 90s, obviously went Republican. And Hawaii, pretty Democrat, also went dem voted for their uh, representative. Uh, who is a Democrat during the time. So, that contains the House. Now let's go to the gubernatorial elections. Now the gubernatorial elections are here. Um, starting with Maine. Maine. The Today Angus King. He is very, uh, he is a, today the senator from uh, Maine. He has been in politics for a very long time. Today, he's a senator from Maine. However, King used to be the governor of Maine, um, at, and he ran as an independent. He obtained, uh, obviously, Cumberland County, which is obviously needed to win in Maine uh, as to swing the popularity. He won by a total of 35%. Democrat, Democrat Joseph Brennan came in second with 33 percent not bad and the republicans came in third with with susan collins with the 23 percent also we have here jonathan carter uh with the six six point four 
who comes from the Green Party. So yes, uh, Angus King won uh, the governorship. I is this his real act? Nope. That he is a new governor. He was elected. Maine has an independent. Uh, new Hampshire, which typically likes to elect Republicans. Um, Steve Merrill, this is a horrible map, by the way. I wish they had the counties, but this is the districts. But uh, Steve Merrill wins with, uh, yes, he wins re-election with 69%. Wayne King, the Democrat, comes in with 25%. Not, not a good night for the Democrats in New Hampshire. While here in Vermont, Democrat uh, Howard Dean wins re-election with 68%. Very good margin, coming that he's coming around to other parties. David F. Kelly uh, didn't stand a chance with 19%. Thomas J. Morse, the independent, came in with 7%. So very rough night for Democrat, uh, uh, for Republicans in, in said Vermont, while very successful night for Repu really bad night for Democrats in New Hampshire. The blue state of Massachusetts also tends to elect Republicans um, for their governor. Bill Weld won by a 70% lead against his opponent, the Democrat, Mark Roosevelt, with the 28%. Bill Weld won, successfully won his re-election. And then once again, Rhode Island. Rhode Island has voted Republican for senators. They are going for us for the senator this episode, but now we're going to see the Rhode Island vote Republican for the governor. Um, Lincoln Almo, he uh, wins uh let's say he is the new governor so this is very surprising once again rhode island super blue state uh and here it seems like democrats uh under mirth york did it pretty good uh she got a 43 percent while um almond got a couple points ahead winning him the election and richard j haley haley an independent received nine percent which kind of, thanks to Haley, this guy's now the governor, um, the new governor of Rhode Island. Connecticut. Okay, Connecticut has their own party. It's pretty popular. It's called a Connecticut party, a more liberal left party. Uh, yeah, even got a county, you see. Um, we'll see, we'll be seeing that, you'll be seeing a Connecticut party a lot in Connecticut politics. But ultimately, it was John G. Rowland who won the election with 36%, beating his opponent, Bill Curry, with a 32% margin. Of course, um, there are third parties here. Anus Gorak, Gor Gor the A Connecticut, or the ACP, I like to call it the ACP for short, uh, takes an 18% lead, while Tom Scott, the Independent, receives 11%, winning nothing. I see that pretty disappointing. New York ultimately wins Republican. Uh, George Pataki um, uh, he, the, is now the new governor of New York crushing his opponent, Mario Como. Now, here's the funny thing about Como. Mario Como, uh, he is, for, was the governor of New York. Okay, he was the governor uh, of New York. Before, but obviously, in, uh, New York wasn't really fun. Founded with Como. Uh, yeah, the Como family. Very, uh, um, yeah, so they're like, let's get him out. Uh, so they easily elect George Pataki, uh, the now new governor of New York. So Pataki, major win. Pataki wins like around 3%, took three points ahead. A uh, very big win for Republicans in New York. Pennsylvania. Uh, this is uh, Tom Rich. He receiving a 45%. Uh, while his opponent, Mark Single, the Democrat, received 39%. Peg Lutzik, the Constitutionalist, received 12%, receiving nothing on the map. Um, that said, Tom Ridge is the new governor of Pennsylvania. 
And then we have Maryland. And I be- Maryland has elected their, de- their senator as a Democrat. They got their senator uh, re-elected, I believe. But now we see um, Republicans kind of did very good in Maryland. Um, ultimately, it is a... Both both parties have vacancies. Ultimately, it was Paris Glendon, Glendon, Glendoning who won the election. 50%. Almost won, I tell you. He only received three counties. Three counties. Uh, Alan Sawbury received 49%. Very good. Very good. She could have very much beat him if she got more votes. Over here, here, or possibly over here. Very much so. Um, ultimately, Democrats triumph in Maryland. South Carolina. We are seeing Democrat. The Democrats are doing pretty well, but David Besley wins in South Carolina. 50% margin. Nick Theodore went, loses by three points. Once again, 47%. Does pretty good, I tell ya. And you'll see this map is pretty interesting. It goes up here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Polling here is interesting, too. So. Let's take a look at that Georgia and why it went blue. Well, Georgia has been pretty... Georgia has always been stuck with the Democratic Party. If there's one southern state, and that is today, that is more refuses to leave the Democratic Party, and that is Georgia. Uh, Georgia, uh, a lot of people in Georgia today like our Democrats because it's the party of the South. Like, seriously. The Democratic Party formed before 1828 under Andrew Jackson under Southern terms. Once again, Andrew Jackson, the founder, was from Tennessee, Southern state. And as we know, Democrats... The Democratic Party dominated the South, especially Georgia. And Georgia has always been a state, like, will always vote for the Southerner. Let's take Jimmy Carter, for example. They voted for Jimmy Carter over 60%. They aren't uh, found, uh, they're not a liberal state back then. And plus, they this is, this is true because they did not want to go to Nixon or Humphrey. They went for Wallace. Georgia will vote. It doesn't matter if there's a liberal or a Republican or a libertarian. They'll vote for you. They have your vote because you're a you're a, salt, a Southerner. And that's all they care about. The party of the South. So that's why there's half of it is, yes, Georgia is becoming very popular lately. But it's also because Georgia is a Southern state with... Southern Democrats, and these Southern Democrats tend to be very conservative. They think conservatively, but will they vote for Joe Biden? Yes, they will. Because, yeah, this is our party. This is our party. This is Georgia's party. Although, yes, Georgia frequently votes Republican now. Uh, it is the party of the South. Once again, embracing Southern pride. 1994, Zell, Zell Miller defeated his, Repu- the, his Republican opponent, Guy Miller. With around 51%. Miller, Milner receiving 48%. So Georgia, Florida. All right. So we see here Luton Childs. He gained a 50% uh, lead against his opponent, Jeb Bush. Yes, Jeb Bush did pretty good. He got around 49% of the popular vote. Uh, I'd say this is a good win. Uh not a win, but good. Republicans did kind of good here. But what Lawton Childs once again uh, coming in first place, he is the incumbent Democrat governor of of Florida. He wins said re-election fifty percent. All right. Um. Yes. So Florida ha- went Republicans in Florida when this or get went got their senator reelected, while Democrats in Florida got their governor reelected. Now let's take a look at Alabama here. Um, now th- this is interesting because he is a formal Democrat, 
Uh, Bob James. He wins re-election by one point in Alabama with 50%. Once again, this guy, is, he, I believe he serves, he ran for governor twice and won twice as a Democrat and once as a Republican. Um, he is, um, so yeah, Bob James. 50% of the popular vote he gained, uh, beating his Democrat opponent, Jim Folsom Jr., um, by one said point. So he did pretty good. Democrats did pretty good in Alabama, also uh, in the South. And Tennessee, Don Sunquist, Don Sunquist gains 54% of the popular vote against his liberal opponent, Bill Bredson, Bredesen, with 44% of the popular vote. Once again, four points away. Um, and Bill Bredesen, yeah, uh, this is a gain from a Democratic when it comes to this. So Don Sudquist is the new governor of said Tennessee. Ohio. So now... George Vion Vionovich wins a landslide in the Buckeye State with 71%, uh, beating his liberal opponent, Rob Birch, with around 25 with 25%. So yes, Rob Birch. Um Michigan. We look in Michigan, we see John Angler. He wins around 61% of the popular vote. Howard Wol Wolpe wins around 36% said of the popular vote. 61% for Angler and Wolpe for 38%. Do, doing pretty good here. Uh, Republicans crushed it, nailed it in the state of Michigan. In Wisconsin, uh, the governor, uh, already governor, Republican governor of Wisconsin, Tommy Thompson, went to re-election with 67%. Um, one county he didn't get is the Native American county. It is the most Democrat county in Wisconsin, uh, voting around 88%. Reason of this is it's a Native American county. Native Americans feel more warmer to Democrats. They tend to vote uh, uh, in pa with passion for Democrats. So, um, yes, this county could not be broken. Um, also... You will also see Thompson also won count Dane County, the county that carries Madison, and Milwaukee County, of course, that carries Milwaukee. Uh, so th definitely, Thompson kind of did good. The one county he didn't win is Menom Menominee, um, said. And he was already the governor of Wisconsin. Obviously, people like him. He all he beats his opponent, Charles Ch Chilva Chilava, with... Um, this, who only got 30% of the vote. Um, Illinois, we see uh, Jim Egler gets, he wins uh, the Illinois election 63%. He even won Chicago. Uh, not often do Republicans do really good in Chicago, but Jim Edgar, he nailed it in Chicago. Don Clark Netch only did really good in this county right here. I believe it, if correct me if I'm wrong, but this county technically is a Republican today. It's I believe once won by Trump. I don't know. All I know is the South Southern Illinois is pretty conservative. Uh, Don Clark Netch or DCN, um, she got 34 percent. Um, yeah, she got destroyed by the Republicans. Republicans and de Democrats in Illinois got destroyed in 94. Uh, Edgar crushed it. Um, now once again, the red state, or in this case, the blue state of w Arkansas, uh, J Jim Guy Tucker, uh, he wins, let's see, re-election as the governor of Arkansas. 59%. And once again, we got to keep in mind, he serves after, served after uh, Bill Clinton. So Bill Clinton here resigned in December of 1992 to be elected the president of the United States. Um, this said, Tucker uh, decides to run it for a full term. I believe he was replaced. Uh, Tucker took over when Clinton resigned. 
or that in this case, that would have meant that he was the said lieutenant governor. Um, so yes, the, t Jim Guy Tucker here did really well. And the election before that, yes, it says here, Bill Clinton uh, did this election. So yes, this is Tucker uh, first full term. Uh, so, Iowa, oh yeah, he's the longest ever governor, Terry Edward Branstad. He wins, like, um, I don't know, his sixth, no, definitely not his sixth term, but he runs a very long time. He is the former governor of Iowa, uh, former governor, uh, I believe today, Ki not Kim, what? Kim Reynolds used to be the lieutenant governor serving under him. He's like, I'm not going to seek a 2018 run. And he scrapped it. And Reynolds took over. So 56%. Uh, once again, Iowa is a blue state during the 90s. Pretty darn blue state. Um, however, um, right here. However, um, for Republicans, they'll elect Branstad. All the way. Minnesota. Democrat, the DFL got creamed in the state of Minnesota. The more the most popular Ernie Carlson. Ernie Carlson, one of the best governors, if not best GOP governor in Minnesota. Um, I believe he is re-elected pretty easily by John Marty who is an incumbent state senator, I believe. Yes, he's incumbent um, as we speak, uh, a state senator, and he lost big. He got 34% of the popular vote, while our, our Ernie received 63%. So yes, Ernie definitely nailed it in the state of Minnesota, getting reelected pretty easily, despite being a Republican. Uh, South Dakota, uh, their very own Bill Janklo gets re um see here uh, is the new governor of South Dakota, receiving fifty five percent of the popular said vote. Fifty five percent going to Janklo, with Jim Beto receiving forty percent. Um, in the state of Nebraska, Democrats nail it. In the state of Nebraska, Ben Nelson uh, wins re-election very easily with 73% of the popular vote, defeating and crushing his opponent, G Jenny, Jenny, Jenny Spence, the Republican, with 25%, only getting 25% in the state of Nebraska. Kansas. Republicans nail it in Kansas, 61%. Uh, B Bill Graves becomes the new governor of uh, Kansas defeating his opponent, Jim Slattery, with who only got 38% of the popular vote. In Oklahoma, Republicans dominate. We have three main parties participating in this election. Frank Keating uh, is the new governor of Oklahoma, receiving 46% of the popular vote. Jack Mildren uh, receiving 29% of the popular vote, being a Democrat, and the independent Wes Watkins, receiving 23% of the popular vote, being an independent. Uh, Texas. Let's see here. Bush, George W. Bush, gets elected pretty easily. Unlike his brother in Florida, who lost by one point, Bush receives 53% of the popular vote. He is elected the governor of Texas, um, beating his opponent, Ann Richards, the governor, the already incumbent governor of Texas. Um, I'm supposing people got tired of her very quickly, and they threw her out. Once again, because Bush received a pretty good number of 53%, uh, dominated here in the state of Texas. New Mexico went Republican. Gary Johnson, you look familiar. Um, I believe he ran in 2020, but he is from, uh, or 2016, he's from New Mexico. He received 49% of the popular vote, being Republican, uh, beating Bruce King, who received 39%. Uh, 
And there's the Green Party member, Roberto Mondragon, who received 10% um, here. Yeah, Gary Johnson. He's the 29th governor of New Mexico. Yes, he's now a libertarian. I believe he ran in 2020 or 2020. 16, 2016, who knows? So yeah, Gary wins in New Mexico. Well, Colorado. Uh, Roy Romner, he wins with a 55% margin. The Democrats nailed it in said Colorado. Just look at how many counties that the uh, that Democrats carried. Um, he beated his opponent, Bruce D. Benson, with around, and who only obtained 38% of the popular vote. Um, yeah, so Romner, Romer, who uh, is already the incumbent governor, he wins re-election uh, in Colorado. All right, then there's Jim Gringer. He said is uh, the new governor of Wyoming, and uh, receiving 58% of the popular vote. Kathy Carpin comes in second with. 40% in Wyoming. 40% in the state of Wyoming. Um, Idaho, B Phil Bat, um, Phil Bat, uh, he gets, um, said, no piece of new governor, said, Phil Bat is the new governor of Idaho, 52%. Beating his liberal opponent, Larry Echo Hawk, who received only 43% of the popular vote. In the state of Arizona, wow, I like this one. Um, Fife Symington, uh, let's see here. He is, wins re election as the governor of Arizona, 52%. That's pretty good. With his liberal opponent, Eddie Basha, receiving 44%. Um, of the said popular vote, 44%. So, Symington for governor. California goes Republican. And Republicans nailed it in said California. Pete Wilson wins 55%. Uh, he was the governor of California. He, he is the incumbent governor of California, 55%. Kathleen Brown, who only got 40% of the popular vote, once again from San Francisco in the capital area of Sacramento, um, more in this west area uh, that she got popularity. Once again, Orange County, going to vote Republican. Very popular, very big Republican county, especially during the 90s. Um, Nevada. Nevada is a Democrat. It is going for Bill, Bob Miller, who won by 52%. He won the capital area of Carson City, Las Vegas, and Clark County. Um, this area, yeah, yeah, once again, living, once again here, leaving the rural areas behind for Jim Gobbins, the loser in this election, the Republican, with 41% of the popular vote. I think we're almost done here. John Kitzhaber. He is the said Democrat from Oregon. He, I think, is the new governor of Oregon, winning 51% of the popular vote, beating his conservative opponent, Jenny Smith, winning 42% of the popular vote. Hawaii, both go blue. Let's start figure out why Alaska went blue real quick. Alaska, I want to let you guys know, is a pretty Republican uh, during the 90s. However, when it comes to its own state, like Montana, it tends to put a big balance. Uh, they like the stability. Once again, it's libertarianism. Uh, libertarians are really, um, with their SF, uh, very uh, motivated with the freedom, freedom-filled spirit. Uh, they um, like to have, to put things in a more democratic way. Uh, Democrats and Republicans both split the government. Uh, 1994, Tony Knowles, wins the election, and he's the new governor of uh, Alaska. There is no map, unfortunately, of this. Uh, sadly, Alaska on Wikipedia is very hard. Uh, Jim Campbell finished with 40%, while Jack Cog Cog Coghill 
the independent candidate received 13% of the popular vote. Um, well, Tony Knowles, he won by one, just one point. That's a pretty good one. Uh, uh, Republicans didn't do bad. Definitely didn't do bad in the state of Alaska, despite losing Alaska. Uh, they definitely uh, did good. And finally, Hawaii. Um, Republican Pat Saki. Pat Saki. She is a native, I believe, a native Hawaiian. Uh, she didn't really, uh, she got a 29 percentage. Third parties, uh, the third party here, there is the, uh, actually did better than Republicans, Frank Facey. Um, part of the BH, best party of Hawaii. Uh, this doesn't even exist, so I don't know what the political leaning of this is, probably left wing, but... Uh, Frank Facey, she did real. He did really better than the Republican, as expected, because Hawaii is a super blue state. Ben Kieto, um, he is the winner, um, and is the new governor of Hawaii, thirty-six percent. Um, so yeah, this is our uh, Republican revolution, um. The Republican Revolution. We saw a Republican victory in the Senate. Um, Republicans win in the Senate by eight points. Um, with in the House fifty-four, and by Republicans won in the gubernatorial with ten. Uh, even though, what confusingly and, and, and very so, you'll see red states like Florida. Georgia, Arkansas, Nebraska, Colorado, and Nevada going to Democrats. I'm like, wow, is this actually really happening? This, how is this a red way? Well, once again, um, in presidential elections, these states will vote Republican, but their own state, and when it comes to their own state, it's their own issues uh, why it, they vote that way. So this is this concludes the conclude this video. This is the Republican Revolution. Too bad there isn't a Democratic Revolution or a Democrat Revolution. That'd be pretty interesting uh, to review. I like to call the uh, election the 1954 elections, the Democratic Revolutions, um, because or 52. Well, yeah. I think 1954 was the biggest Democrat win, um, because Democrats carried uh, the House, Senate, and the governor and governor seats during Dwight Eisenhower. Uh, no one saw it coming. So, and then of course Democrats would hold have a very hold the Congress for a very long time. Uh, so yeah, this is the Republican Revolution, and. Stay tuned. I am hoping to review the politics of the European Union soon. Um, I have found a great map on the European Union, and I'm going to review politics of the European Union very soon, but that'll be in my next episode. So, so long.